Hey, thanks for checking out our video today. So one of the questions that we get a lot from our customers is whether they should put any kind of a finish on their planter when they get it. Um, and the answer to that question is, it, it kind of depends. So our planters do really well if they are unfinished. Um, they'll last for several years, you don't have to worry about that, but they will change colors and, uh, and they'll fade to a gray a lot sooner than if you do coat them. Now we're gonna show you uh, up close a little bit the differences between uh, what we have here, but you can see the planter on the left. This was actually coated with tongue oil, and uh, this comes from the uh, tongue tree nut. It's been extracted out of it, the tongue oil. It's generally considered food safe, um, and we feel really comfortable putting it on our planters and then growing food and, and our kids eating it. No problems with that. Um, we'll show you a little bit. We did actually did a, a blog post on kind of the process for that and, and what we thought between that and, and what we have on the right side here. Um, but this one is coated in tongue oil, so you can see it's got a little bit darker texture compared to this one, which is covered with uh, a shellac. Now the oil will soak into the wood and it actually gets absorbed by the wood, uh, whereas the shellac is more of a coating that goes on the outside. Um, now this planter we did with shellac, and it, it's actually my personal favorite um, because it does end up with a little bit lighter color than the tongue oil. Um, it does seem like it gets a little bit better water resistance as well. Um, I think it was easier to put on than to apply than the tongue oil was, um, but it may not last quite as long as the oil will. So we're gonna do an experiment and we're gonna see uh, and kind of document each month how, how they're looking. Um, but these are the two options that I usually recommend to people is either tongue oil or shellac. Both are considered food safe. Uh, the shellac comes from a, uh, the shellac bug, it's actually, um, I, I think, uh, it, it actually, so the shellac comes from the shellac bug, um, and it's also considered food safe. And, and those are really the ones that we want. If, you, if food safe doesn't matter to you, if you're using it for flowers, or if it's just not of concern to you, um, then the, the thing that we would recommend is like a deck sealer, like a, like a water seal, Thompson's water seal, or something like that. Um, that will do, give you great results. It'll, it'll extend the life of your planter. Uh, it won't change colors quite a bit. Um, but the most important thing is if you really want to keep it this color, you're gonna want to apply it more than just once and, and wait. You're gonna want to apply it at least every year, uh, if not a little bit more often, kind of depends on your climate. Okay, here we have a little bit closer look at these two planters. Again, the one on the left is the tongue oil planter and the one on the right is the shellac coated planter. If we go in here, um, the logos are a little bit misleading because the one on the tongue oil planter was actually darker to start with. Um, so that's not a very good measure. But if we look at the knots on the tongue oil, you can see that they're pretty dark and they've been kind of accented quite a bit. And if we move over to the shellac one, you can see that they're still there, but they're just a little bit lighter. And the overall tone here, let me get a shot of the two legs together. And that's really not a lighting thing that I can tell. It's more just the shellac is lighter. The oil soaks in. It's, it's not a dark oil, but it is an oil, and it soaks into the wood and turns it a little bit darker color than the shellac. Now, as far as the finish, this is not an oily finish. There's nothing oily on my hands uh, when I rub it. It did feel that way when I first put it on, and I wasn't sure if it was going to soak in or not. After leaving it for a few days, it did soak in really well. And now I feel comfortable sitting on it and you know handling it, no problem whatsoever. And I say sitting on it, not I wouldn't sit on this planter. I mean I could, it's strong enough, but I, I more because of our bench. We have a bench planter that would be just fine if you coated in oil. I think you do get a very nice even coating with the oil on here. There's no spots that I can really see. Now I didn't wipe it off. The directions re recommended wiping it off. I did notice that it kind of got these um, white spots on it in a couple places where it was thicker. I'm not really sure what's going on there, but uh, it only happened really on the inside. I'm not too worried about it. But other than those, it's a really nice finish. And I have no complaints about how it went on or how it covered. Now, looking at the shellac, this actually went on a little bit easier. It's easier to apply. and because it's thinner and it just kind of brushes on a little bit more easily. The oil soaks into the wood quite a bit. You gotta work harder to spread it out. But if you don't spread it out well, you can see a couple spots here where it will kind of 
group up or bunch up. And so it, it almost dries like a wax. It's like a wet uh, liquid when it goes on and it almost turns into a wax when it dries. So if you have thicker spots, you might notice them. That doesn't bother me very much. Uh, here you can see it's just a little bit uneven. But, but if that kind of thing does bother you, you'd, you'd want to be a little bit more careful putting it on, um, realizing that it would. Now the shellac feels like it will be more waterproof, but it also feels like since it's just on the surface, it'll break down a little bit more over time compared to the tongue oil, which doesn't feel as waterproof, but since it's soaked into the wood, I feel like it will last quite a while. Now let's get some water and we'll just splash a little bit of water on here and kind of show you how it beads up. Okay, so we have a watering can here. Um, I'm gonna pour just a little bit of water on here so you can see. Um, this is the tongue oil planter and you can see it beads up. It definitely, uh, it's not red quickly soaking into the wood at least. Um, and you can see, you know, kind of off on the edge, there's some spots where it's beaded up a little bit better. It's just kind of a big puddle in the middle. Now, if I wipe this away, I can see like it, it can be rubbed in a little bit. It's hard to say how much is actually staying with the wood here versus just sitting on top, but it's definitely not beating up the way that you'll see here in a second. Now, let's go over to the shellac one and take a look here. And I'm gonna pour a little bit of water again. And here you can see this beads up quite well. So we have some good beads out here. Now here's kind of a puddle, but if I move it around, you can see it kind of pulls back together and, and beads up again. So my initial assessment on this is that the shellac is probably a little bit more water resistant than the tongue oil. It's also easier to apply. The cost was sort of negligible. They were about the same, 15 or $20 for each of them on Amazon. Probably a little bit cheaper if you get them from a local store. Overall, I would recommend the shellac over the tongue oil, but if tongue oil is all you can find, then I think you'll do really well. All right, hopefully that answers your questions. Um, if not, feel free to reach out. You can get us on Facebook or uh, via email, sales at boldlygrowing.co, or on our website, we also have a contact form on there at uh, boldlygrowing.co. Thanks a lot, and let us know if you have any questions. Mm -hmm.